Welcome to Cunningham Piano. I'm Hugh Sung. The store is closed. We have been mandated to close by the state of Pennsylvania. And I'm actually here in the store all by myself. As you can tell, I'm in my everyday clothes. Um, I wanted to make this video because I've actually been helping a lot of folks make the transition to become online teachers. I myself has, have had uh, several years of experience. I started out in 2009 creating a YouTube series called Claire de Lune from Scratch. And I'm still presently to this day teaching online popular piano at Artistworks. And I've been mainly focused on helping piano teachers learn how to teach one-on-one -on -one live lessons through video conferencing apps like Zoom. Last night, I got an interesting question from someone who was asking for my help to help his sister-in-law who was teaching, who was a choral teacher in Canada, and was asking if there was a way that she could still meaningfully work with her students even though she's restricted to staying at home and restricted to using online collaboration tools like Zoom. Is there a way that a choral teacher can still work with her course when they can't be in the same room at the same time? So I was really fascinated with that challenge. And I referred this person to a phenomenal composer and innovator. His name is Eric Whitaker, uh, world renowned for being a choral composer. And for several years, he's been doing this project called The Virtual Chorus, where he invites singers from all around the world to contribute their parts via YouTube, assembles them together, and puts these amazing video virtual choral programs performances together. And I thought that would be the perfect model to try to use to help this teacher and any other teacher that's interested in ensemble teaching uh, in this day and age where we all are restricted to be quarantined in our own homes. Um, there's some interesting challenges uh, in terms of why ensembles don't work live over the internet. And it simply has to do with the fact that there is something called lag. Electrons are limited to the speed of light, which is pretty fast in and of itself, but there's still distances to be covered. And the time it takes for, for a video signal to go across the internet and reach the other person and come back, there is a delay. And so uh, whenever you try to play together, with another musician over a video conferencing app, you will never be completely synchronized. There will always be some sort of delay, which makes ensemble playing basically impossible according to the laws of physics. Now, a number of years ago, there were a number of startup apps that were trying to cut down that delay as, 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 minimal as po minimally as possible through some clever compression and workarounds uh, and so that you could almost, you wouldn't be able to really hear the delay if you were within a certain uh, geographical distance of each other. Um, and unfortunately, I've been trying to research this and it looks like most of these real-time online collaborative startups have gone out of business. Uh, there are still a few around online, but they're not live, they're not real-time. They're basically tracks that people can upload and share with each other but you can't play together at the same time. It's just not physically possible. So with that in mind, there are still ways that I think we can creatively make music together. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to use Mr. Whitaker's virtual chorus project as a model and put together our own Cunningham, uh, I'm going to call it an online chorus an orchestra project, maybe the Cunningham Online Ensemble Project. Um, and what we're gonna, I'm going to do is actually help you see step by step how I put this whole thing together so that if you want to replicate this in your area, you should be able to. Okay, so this is going to be a multi-part video. I'm going to go through all the steps that I take to assemble uh, this ensemble and hopefully get lots and lots of people to collaborate and put together a beautiful piece of music. So Cunningham Piano is actually made up of a lot of vocalists. We have a significant number of professional singers uh, on our staff, and one of them suggested that we work on Mozart's Ave Verum Corpus, 
a lovely work, uh, not too difficult. Uh, and fortunately, I was able to find somebody had actually made an arrangement for chorus and orchestra. The original version, of course, has strings and organ, but with a full orchestra, this could be kind of fun. So we'll see. If, I'm not sure if I'll be able to get some of my orchestra friends and colleagues to, per, to contribute, but if they can, that would be wonderful. At the very least, we're going to at least have uh, our singers, and we're going to open it up to our, our friends and community to participate. And again, I'm going to go through all the steps to set something like this up. So let's go behind the scenes and start this project together. So let me break down the essential steps of how this is all going to work. The first step is I'm going to record a, a backing track. This is going to be the backbone of putting everything together. In pop music, the backing track is a click track. It's basically just a metronome playing in the earphone. Now with pop music, the tempo doesn't change. The speed doesn't change. It's the same speed from the beginning to the end. So all they really need is a metronome, and just, they just need to know where the chord changes are, and everybody can collaborate no matter where they are. In fact, that's actually a way that musicians perform live together. Uh, there is sophisticated software and servers that basically send the same tempo click track to these different places, and people just play with the click track. They're not really playing with each other. But it, the computer then assembles all of those things at staggered times and synchronizes them so it comes out at the end like a simulated live performance. But that's actually not live. It's just people listening to a synchronized metronome. Now, you could do that if you want to. And it's certainly very, very simple just to set up a metronome. But I'm actually going to show you how to do it freeform. In classical music, of course, we have lots of changes in timing. And of course, I also want to indicate some dynamic changes as well. So I'm going to show you how we can do this as classical musicians. All right, so let's start off. We're going to start off by making a backing track. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create the, um, the parts, all the other parts that will uh, accompany uh, the, with all the individual vocal parts so that each line, each, each vocalist can hear and practice their own part respective relative to the, the backing track. Um, the next step will be to con create a conducting video track, okay, where the musicians can follow along and they can see the indications more clearly in terms of dynamic changes and tempo changes. Um, finally, I'm going to show the whole upload-download process so that everybody can contribute. And we're going to use YouTube as the main tool for putting these videos, uh, for contributing and sharing these videos. And then I'm going to show the assembly process where I take these videos, assemble them together, and then create a final performance of all the assembled uh, video tracks. So those are the, st the essential steps. Let's start off by making our key, uh, let's start off by making our main backbone uh, backing track. So as I said, you could simply turn on a metronome and play with the metronome, which just have a click track going. But I'm just going to use this as a reference in terms of hearing what this sounds like, OK? And I'm going to actually freeform it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to record. OK, let's go ahead and set my recording up over here. Of course, if you don't have a clavinova, you can just do this on a piano with an audio recorder. But I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I have this clavinova. I'm going to set up multiple tracks. And we're going to go ahead and get rid of these things over here. And I'm all set. And we're going to get started. And what I'm going to do is when I start the recording, I'm actually going to give myself two measures of lead so that I can know exactly when to give the indication for everybody to start. Okay. Now you'll notice I was very purposefully conducting myself in this performance. This is going to be really, really important when I conduct, when I create my conducting video, because I'm going to be actually watching myself perform so that I can synchronize the conducting to follow the music. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and save this file. Now I'm going to create each of the vocal tracks on top 
of this backing track. Okay, and I'll be able to send out different versions of this recording by uh, playing just certain parts and, and muting other ones. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the voice of this uh, this instrument. I'm going to actually use an oboe. All right. The reason for this is because I want an instrument that really cuts through clearly while people are listening. So this, uh, I, this is a beautiful voice, but it also is a very pronounced voice, which you'll be able to, you'll be able to hear over all the tracks, OK? So now let me set up the recording over here. I'm going to go ahead and start recording the soprano line. I'll go back and repeat the alto, tenor, and then the bass. So let's just take this one at a time. First of all, let's set up this recording. I'm going to overwrite the MIDI. I'm going to set this on a new track. Let's set this on track number two, OK? And I should be good to go. Here we go. This is the soprano line. Okay, so that's all done for the soprano. Let's go ahead and now we're going to record the alto part. All right, now I want to make sure that this is on track number three, a separate track over here. All right, let's go ahead and get this started. That part, let's go back. Now let's add the tenor part. Okay, we've got our tenor line. I'm just going to quickly see. Yeah, I'm going to switch to an English horn <laughs> just, just for fun for the bass line. Here we go. Let's go ahead and do this. And again, let's switch to another track. And let's go ahead. Our tracks here. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Okay. Our USB drive. Okay. We're going to call this, oops, go back over here. I'm going to call this Mozart. Good enough. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, create the conducting track with the conducting track video. I'm going to actually extract the video that I created earlier and watch that as I conduct the score so that I know exactly what I want to do musically. Okay, so give me a few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and extract the video from this camera and I'll show you the process of how I conduct. <laughs> and again, a, a little disclaimer here, I'm not a conductor, but again, this is just for demonstration purposes and hopefully you get an idea of how to apply this yourself. Okay, so let's go ahead and extract this video. To extract the individual vocal parts, I'm going to use GarageBand. I'm going to start an empty project over here. I'm going to use Software Instrument. And I'm going to go ahead and open up my MIDI file, which is on my thumb drive. Go ahead and just open this one up over here. Now you can see all of the different parts as oboe parts. I'm going to go ahead and mute out my alto, my tenor, my bass, so that we only hear, I just play it over here. OK, so we just have the soprano part here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Share, Export Song to Disk. 
I'm going to save it as an MP3 file. What I call this is Mozart Soprano. And we're going to save this onto uh, my Dropbox file here. Okay. And we're going to repeat this process for all of the individual parts. Let's go ahead and mute this, unmute this alto part. Let's go ahead and share this one, do the same thing. Okay, now I'm just going to, for my own personal reasons, I'm going to export a piano-only version for the conducting video. That's just, for me, it's a little bit easier not to hear the other parts, but just to follow from the accompaniment part. But again, it's up to you. If you feel like you want to hear everything while you create your conducting video track, that's fine. But I'm just going to use this as my personal option so I can hear my musical things a little bit more clearly. Um, when I was doing... The, the recording on this particular instrument, I didn't have an expression pedal, so I couldn't change the dynamics of the vocal instruments, the oboes. So, um, I, th that, again, that's just my personal situation. It's going to be easier for me to hear the dynamics that I did uh, with just the piano parts. So let's just go ahead and do this. And okay, we're all set to go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead now and work on creating the conductor video track. So I thought it might be helpful to see what I'm doing in terms of using a video editor. I'm using Adobe Premiere, which is a professional level video editing program. Certainly not something that you need to use, but this is something I've been working on, working with for quite a while, and it's, it's been a fantastic program. So let me go back and see if I can find the video track that has the piano track that I was working on. Of course, I'm using a pretty sophisticated way of doing this. You certainly don't need to use this. If you're just recording the accompaniment track onto a phone, I think this is where I'm doing it, you can just simply play like the phone, uh, the phone video. So here we go. This looks like the video, the area of the video, where I'm going to be playing the accompaniment track. Now, what I want to do is I also want to take the, um, the audio file, the piano audio file. Let me see if I can find that. Oh, it's going to be in my Dropbox folder. Let's go over here. Okay. Yeah, so here's the piano version over here. Bring this in, bring this track in. All right. And I'm going to try to see if I can synchronize this with the video. Here we go. So this is where the video, I'm going to go ahead and start this with the audio track here, and it ended when the audio track ends. I'm going to create a start point over here, and go back to this tool, and create an end point over here. Okay, and now I'm going to also just make sure that the solo track is just the piano part. There you go. Okay, we're all set. I'll go ahead and export that. And now I'll have a video that I can follow to create the conductor track. I'll go ahead and move this out. Let's go back to the drive where I'm saving this at. I'm going to call this Mozart Accompany. And export this. Okay, so now I'm ready to record the conducting track. And again, a little disclaimer here, I'm not a conductor, so please forgive me for my poor conducting skills, but I don't know if you can see in the mirror here, I am actually looking at myself playing the accompaniment track. You can see it in the mirror here. So I'm looking at this monitor. I have the monitor coming out of my computer here. So I'm gonna be able to play it, and then I'll be able to follow myself musically, and I've got the score on my iPad here. So. We're all set to go. Let's go ahead and give this a try.
So that's my conducting track. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut and edit this, and I'm going to create multiple versions with just the accompaniments and the vocal lines specific to each vocal so they can hear their own part. And let's see what this looks like.